All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the Good Morning Abuja on NTA 5, the Unity Station. Now we have a guest in the house who will be talking to us about building a tech-driven business in Nigeria. He is Mr. Stanley Umezuike. He is the co-founder of the Fiadigo Group of Companies. You are welcome. It's a pleasure, man. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Stanley. Good morning. How are you today? I'm fine, man. Good to see you. It's great to meet you. Okay, Mr. Stanley, once again, welcome to our studio. Thank you. I know so many people have businesses. Is it even possible they are into your business, your kind of your, this one you're talking about, but they don't even know about it. So now let's talk about tech-driven business. In a layman's term, what does it mean? The same thing means a business driven by technology. Okay. So like any business that is driven by technology, supported by technology, where the entrepreneur is working with the age of technology, is a tech-driven business. Mm. Wow. Okay, so what does it take to own this kind of business or to run it? Sometimes it may just be by having a laptop or a smartphone. Okay. Um, so these tech tools, even though they look small, they are actually powerful. With such uh, a tool, you can actually run uh, a tech driven business and be able to solve problems for your customers. Okay. But this tech driven business, in a way, it's good. Okay. In another way, I mean, it's not too good because of Yahoo, Yahoo. You don't know what they're using. Yeah, you know, in every uh, industry, you have the good elements, you have the bad yes, elements, exactly. and, and some people may want to abuse mm -hmm. the process. Uh, but of course, there are good people, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, who, who are doing business with technology, and there are also people that are passionate about what they are doing. The bad elements, uh, we are hoping that they will learn and actually use that skills that they have mm -hmm. to actually solve problems mm -hmm. and, and, and yes. make money better. Okay, so now let's look at it. Is Nigeria ripe for this kind of business? Of course. Nigeria is the biggest market in Africa. Okay. Nigeria has a lot of people that use smartphones, that use uh, laptop, mm. And for example, WhatsApp, for example, 95% mm. of Nigerians, according to NCC, use WhatsApp. Mm. So Nigeria is actually ripe for technology. So in fact, one of the best places to uh, do a tech-driven business mm. is in Nigeria. Wow. So yeah, the market is, is huge, and Nigerians they used to uh, social media. So yes, Nigeria is right for. Okay, so now still talking about business. So many people who once owned businesses mm. are shutting down. Businesses are crashing. What do you think is the reason, and how can we work on it? Let me use this opportunity to talk about startups uh, that are also crashing despite getting huge funding. Yes, okay. of course, there are many reasons why a business may crash. Uh, doing business is not easy, okay. and doing business in Africa is not easy. Okay. However, some uh, startup uh, businesses are also crashing despite the fact that they got huge funding. Um, getting funding to start a business is amazing. Mm. Getting funding to scale a business is amazing. But also seeking funding to sustain a business, mm. that is where the problem is. Yeah. So yeah. the question is, what kind of business are you doing? Mm. How are you making profit? So my advice to startups is, look at your capacity, mm. all right? You don't even need so much money to start. Mm. Start with what you have, then you can get funding to scale that business. But then don't use the money from investors and start paying salaries mm. and get a big office mm. and then start doing what is beyond your capacity. Mm. That something that is that that something is big doesn't mean that it is healthy. Mm. So if you stretch that business beyond its, its, its capacity, mm. the business will Sometimes crash. You have issue. Yes. So that is why most of these startups they get a lot of money and then within a, a year they crash. Uh, so of course there are other issues, but you know when you focus on the process, you know, uh, creating the right process in your business. And then you always make sure that what you are doing, you are doing the right thing. Mm. And if you also have mentorship, mm. you have a good mentor, yeah. then that mentor can help you to navigate the difficult waters of business. Mm. Okay, let's begin to outline the challenges. We know that a lot of challenges come with this uh, tech-driven business. So from your own point of view, what do you think are the challenges? Let's look at the major challenges that okay. entrepreneurs face. Yes, the major challenge is... Uh, of course, a business owner needs constant power supply, especially if you are doing mm. tech driven business. Okay. Constant power supply, uh, constant electricity, mm. um, you need uh, access to good internet, 
in the mm. constant internet. And when it is not there, it is a problem. Mm. And the tech tools too, laptop, the two mm. may be uh, software, mm. maybe hardware. Uh -huh. So these uh, entrepreneurs, they need these tools in order to run their business effectively. But if they don't have it, it can hinder the growth of that business. Mm. Uh, so uh, these are the big challenges. But when you have constant electricity, mm. when you have uh, access to internet, especially data, and then when you have the right tech tools, you'll be able to run that business effectively. But my advice to business owners, sometimes uh, all the things you need, to st you, you may not get them, but start with what you have okay. and make sure that you're in the right environment. In the right environment that supports your growth, and then uh, you know, you, as as long as you are moving steadily, mm -hmm. you'll be able to make ma massive growth. You're a co-founder <laughs> of a group of companies. Now, we just talked about, we talked about the challenges. So let me put it this way. How were you able to surmount those challenges? Yes, I was able to surmount those, uh, the challenges because, yeah, I'm a co-founder, so I have a good business partner. His name is Luis Akweze. So when you are running a business and you, have, you are doing that business with someone that, ha that you share the same interest, okay. the same core values with, it helps you to grow, it helps you to, both of you will be able to manage uh, whatever challenges are coming your way. And we have a business mentor, we have good mentors, mm -hmm. people who are already there, people who have, people who have succeeded in industry, mm -hmm. people who are at the top. Uh, so uh, for business owners, for entrepreneurs, I also say going for events, networking, building valuable relationships, it helps mm -hmm. so that you meet, when you meet someone that is already there, where you are, that person has seen those challenges, you know, they, they have been able to navigate through those challenges, they will be able to help you. Uh, okay. So and also being in a good environment and making sure that mm. we have access to the right tools. Yes, uh, yes all of this is okay. happening. Uh, uh, sorry, I want to ask a question that is funny. <laughs> that is outside. Well, you know, there is this notion that Anambras, they hardly go to school. All they want to do is business. They will just enter from childhood, <laughs> six years, eight years, they are out. They just push down our uh, education. Now, in your own, so uh, looking at you, you are educated and you're into business. Yes. So what's your take on that? Yes, you know, uh, an educated businessman is better than a non-educated businessman. Yes. So even people from Anambra State that have seen the impact of education and so they send their children so to school. Now. Yes. Okay. So that means it's true. Yes. Be oh, wow. The case is good, but yes. now, Anambra people, yeah. Anambra people and ah, of course yes. most Nigerians are now, doing better in yeah. education, mm -hmm. even in Waiyek, if mm -hmm. you look at mm -hmm. uh, So education is very important. It's try, you know, if you want to run a tech driven business, education is vital because mm -hmm. the industry changes all the time. The industry evolves mm -hmm. almost every month now. New things are coming up and if you are not updated, updated you will be outdated. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You know, you're actually talking to yourself also. <laughs> no, no. Oh, yes, you were. <laughs> I have my cousins who refuse to go to school, who are solid business men, but, but yeah, now they want to make leisure. send their children to school. So you see? Yeah, that things have changed. changed. But it used to be like that. We need to yes. like, you know, yes. things have changed. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Stanley. We've, we've learned something today, and I'm sure parents out there, business owners out there, are also learning something. I have learned one or two things. Yes, I've been speaking with Stanley Umezulike, the co-founder of the Go Group of Companies. We're talking about building a tech-driven business in Nigeria. Once again, thank you so much for coming around. It's a pleasure. Yes, yeah, the program is still... What you're doing. I can see the passion. Mm -hmm. what you're and it's young. You know, I, I, I'm always yeah. impressed when I see young people yeah. doing something. So kudos to you. Thank and I'm you sure you employ a lot of young people. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you okay, here's the program. It's still good morning, Abuja, showing on Inter Channel 5. Abuja, don't touch the dial. Let's take a break.